Uh, so allow me to present to you the Baguio City's initiative in addressing the urban heat. Okay, so as, uh, met, as uh, earlier uh, introduced to you, we have here the profile of our city. So I don't have to repeat, but I want to emphasize that uh, for on the population, because the population is uh, uh, the based on the based on the census of population. However, there was this study from the uh, National Economic and Development Authority on the urban carrying capacity for the city which uh, is mentions that uh, the population during daytime is much higher or, or almost doubles the, uh, the level of the population. This is because uh, the city is, uh, this considers the students, the individuals who are uh, doing business or work in the city, but who are not actually residents of the city of Baguio. Okay, so that is that on the screen is the uh, general land use of the city, and uh, it's very dominant the yellow color, which uh, represents the residential the residential uh, zones, and uh, the green ones are the watershed or pine tree zones, as well as the parks or and recreation areas. So as we can see, we have uh, uh, more than fifty percent of residential. In terms of proportion, we have uh, more than 50% uh, residential uh, areas for the city of Baguio, and we have a minimum or, or a very few uh, area for or around 20% of the land area is uh, for the watershed or the green areas. Okay, so I want us I want to share the functional roles of the city to explain the, the trend of development here in the city of Baguio. So we are all aware that uh, the city is a prime education center of North Luzon. And uh, as such, we actually have 70, 741 educational institutions, to con which considers 454 elementary schools, 219 secondary schools, 22 universities and colleges, and 46 technical vocational education and training facilities. The city also has seven hospitals catering to the local community and neighboring provinces with a total bed capacity of 920, 923 as of 2019. The city is among the top 14 preferred tourist destinations in the country with tourist arrivals of uh, 1.5 million in 2019. It is also among the top 20 destinations for meetings, incentives, for uh, incentives, conventions, and uh, exhibitions. Also, the Baguio hosts the Philippine Export Zone Authority, which is the major contributor, not only to the city's economic output, but also the regional gross domestic output of the Cordillera region. And as of 2019, the city has 23,037 registered establishments composed of wholesale, retail, trade, real estate, transient operators, boarding houses, restaurants, eateries, cafes, financial intermediation, and other services. The city uh, is also the seat of uh, the national government national government offices in the region. So uh, given the functional roles of the city, this is, we can already imagine the uh, development that's, uh, that's uh, going on in the city. And that explains the number of numerous, the numerous number of establishment, especially in the uh, central business district. Also the city was recognized by UNESCO as a creative city under the craft and folk arts category for its artistry in promoting hand-woven products, not only in the national, but also global arena. And so given that, and uh, considering all the, uh, pre the earlier presentations on the GUHIT, we have these uh, initiatives that uh, the, of the LGU, which uh, I will be sharing you. So as emphasized earlier about the, the 
uh, factor, the that the most factor in contributing or may that may affect or contribute to the urban heat is actually the presence of trees. So we have actually this uh, regreening programs uh, that even without the the uh, the result of the even without this project, we actually have this because we we practically feel the difference of uh, having more trees than uh, no trees or less trees. So we really feel through the uh, the warming of uh, temperature in the city. So we have the regreening program. We are actually preparing the the uh, regreening master plan, and we have the uh, this is actually aligned to the. 15 uh, strategic goals of the current administration, specifically on revitalizing the environment, which is uh, the, actually the topmost, or the, yes, the topmost priority of the city in the, for this administration. So we have the green, green, green programs, which includes the ongoing formulation of the regreening master plan, the arboretum, which is a botanical garden containing living collections of uh, woody plants and is intended at least in part for a scientific study. So the special feature of this arboretum is a proposed five kilometer elevated walkway within the Forbes Park Reservation. Assorted three species are planted along the elevated way while the existing trees will be labeled to include their scientific name, origin, importance, and the botanical uses. So this project is actually ongoing. We also uh, propose an, a bamboo setum at Dominican Hill Heritage Park, which uh, this bamboo setum refers to an area or garden where different species of bamboos are kept and planted. Bamboos are considered minor forest products that is included in this regreening master plan. So that's part of the regreening master plan. We also have this urban uh, forestry which covers not only the forests and watersheds, but also small patches of gardens and parks in the city and also in the barangay. So this also include the street islands and the mid strips uh, for the, of the street or the road. Uh, and since there is also a low survival rate of trees being planted directly to those forestation areas, the city has established also uh, tree nurseries to grow these trees up to certain period where they are ready to be transplanted in designated areas with high probability of surviving. The need for urban gardening was also recognized uh, during the community quarantine if you've heard about the survival gardens as this would also help in uh, food sufficiency for the uh, residents in the barangays. This may be done as the as uh, barangay or as individual uh, household and the city will be assisting individuals also and barangays who want to undertake strawberry production using the land or raised beds as source of livelihood and this has become a continuing effort of the city through the city's veterinary and agriculture office uh, another um, Another initiative is the park development. So this is also a very important initiative of the city. And uh, while, while uh, shown on the slides are the major parts, this also will include parks in the small parks in the barangay. So we have here the, barang the Burnham Park, which involves the rehabilit uh, yeah, the Burnham Park rehabilitation. And this will be, uh, we will be uh, provided with the financial grant from the DOT through the Asian Development Bank. So the DOT has actually committed a grant of 480 million before the COVID. Unfortunately, this uh, fund was, uh, before it was downloaded, this was already used for COVID management. So the DOT has, uh, has arranged with ADB to, to provide the necessary funding, but uh, to be paid by the DOT, but also with counterpart from the LGU. We also plan to rehabilitate our Mines View Park, the Botanical Park. We have the tree park. So this tree park is actually a, a private property of the GSIS, but through collaboration of the, uh, the city government with the 
GSIS, they are willing to, to develop this uh, portion of uh, uh, the area near the convention center to be a three part as part of their uh, corporate social responsibility. And also the conversion of the Irisan, it used to be a dump site and uh, now it's currently being converted into an eco park. So this is an ongoing. Also in Wright Park, uh, uh, this is a prospect. For Wright Park, is it's still a prospect. So for water and uh, sanitation, water supply and sanitation is another uh, program that uh, the LGU is uh, will be undertaking. So we know very well that uh, with the increasing or the with the rapid urbanization, there is increasing uh, demand for water, and that there is a need for above water supply. We need uh, some water retention facilities for uh, like the water harvesting, water clarification facilities like recycling. And then we have the sewage and siptage management program. So the city actually has been uh, engaging the, or has been, uh, yes, has been uh, meeting with the Asian Development Bank for this project. And uh, the, and we, as, uh, and currently they are conducting a feasibility study for our water supply and uh, our uh, sewerage system. We know very well that uh, we have a big problem when it comes to the sewerage or the sewage uh, problem. And especially that uh, we have the uh, more than, I think uh, two decade, two decade only uh, facility for the sewerage system. And that is the Baguio sewerage treatment plant at, uh, at the North Sanitary Camp. And uh, that is uh, also due for rehabilitation. And with the growing, um, and with the growing uh, establishments and the growing population, we expect that uh, if we do not do something about this, then uh, our situation on environment and sanitation will become worse. And considering that uh, we, the city, also hosts the two most uh, polluted rivers, which are the Bued River and the Balili River. Uh, the city is also the first city in the country to signify uh, to DOTR and UNDP on their program on the low carbon urban transport. And uh, yes, we support the PUV transport modernization. Na, uh, we should have implemented with, uh, if, we do not with, if we do not have this uh, COVID situation. We also have the local public transport route plan which will uh, uh, will balance the the movement or yeah the movement of the of the um, of the vehicles that uh, to be uh, that are allowed the route within the CBD or outside the CBD and one of uh, since we have difficulty convincing our transport sector to convert or to undergo the modernization we use this local public transport plan as, uh, as a way of uh, rewarding them. Like those, those vehicles that uh, will undergo modernization will be allowed to, to, to run within the CBD while the others uh, with the old models are, or the, the non-modernized non uh, vehicles are to be allowed only at the uh, outside the CBD. And the, uh, also, we, we have this because uh, we have a very big problem on air pollution, especially that the most, uh, one, uh, some of, or most of the top 10, uh, most of the top 10 causes of morbidity are air pollution related. And so our uh, city environment uh, and environment and parks management office is also conducting the regular air quality monitoring to monitor the air quality index of the city. And um, we, during the community quarantine, we recognize the, the importance of the bicycle and other non-motorized vehicles as mode of transportation. So we, the city would like to, to carry this as a, uh, 
even after as a new normal measure so even after this uh, pandemic we will still promote the use of bicycle and uh, non-motorized vehicles as they are uh, they have no emissions and then we want uh, there, there is an ongoing strengthening of the city traffic and uh, transport management uh, office which is lodged with our uh, city engineering office so we also have this uh, for a program on road widening because uh, we all know that as uh, vehicles congest they have more concentration or more emissions as they concentrate in uh, during uh, traffic congestion so we want to have this has already started in the in Gillian Road in Marcos Highway and we hope to to and this will continue to ease the traffic and uh, we also promote our city as a walkable city and uh, with the theme of building uniform better quality sidewalks so this is uh, synonymous to promoting also our pedestrianization uh given yung presentation kanina on the session road uh, with the building and all what we can uh, what we can also what we want to continue is to continue the pedestrianization of the uh, session road like to mean if uh to minimize the vehicle emissions there the air pollution and so before the COVID, we actually close uh, the session road every Sunday for uh, for the people to enjoy. So there will there are uh, no vehicles are allowed to pass through session road during Sundays, and we hope to continue this as we see also some improvements in the uh, air quality of the city, specifically in session road. We also want. Uh, we are also into sidewalk improvement and recovery this is an ongoing uh, ongoing initiative of the city because there are a lot of uh, establishments and business activities that have encroached to the to our sidewalks and uh, the city would like to recover that and to improve that for a uh, better walkability and also in in the improvement of uh, the uh, our sidewalks we also would consider the needs of our uh, persons with disabilities so there and also again we don't want more uh, we don't want the buses to be uh, to be flying here with in the cbd so there is also a plan for an integrated uh, terminals and parking building so we have the west uh, west terminal we have the south terminal north terminal central terminal but uh, of course again with this covid hindi pa po siya gaanong na is na implement pero there are also other uh, in, private investors who have already signified na they want to to establish a terminal in the city especially in the uh, outskirts and uh, that we are we continue to receive proposals from them but if these terminals will be uh, implemented, then uh, that will be on a PPP, in on a PPP mode, so public-private partnership, also with our parking buildings. And as we also uh, have these parking buildings, it should it will be a PPP, a combination of a private, public-private partnership and also an LGU. So we, if it is a private public partnership then it still be uh, we want the design of our parking buildings to be uh, the to follow the green building design there so that's just an example of the of a parking building that we want also to promote and so uh, i think that's all the, those are just uh, some or few of the few of the uh, initiatives of the city that are currently being undertaken but also we also have the the uh, legislative support from the city council um especially if you the 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 ongoing issue or the current issue which we are faced now like the tree cutting moratorium and the uh moratorium for the high rise uh, building construction so 
there are other uh, initiatives that uh, we can share you but uh, given this uh, limited time at na late pa ako na start <laughs> so uh, we we you are always welcome to visit our office so yun po ang aking presentation for now po thank you